it's just a certain vibe that Manchester's got. Manchester's always been a little bit legendary when it comes to music uh, and football. If you have a question for H, please raise your hand or membership card. Let's go to you down the corner here. No pressure, but would you be able to freestyle for us? <laughs> Masked up, back in disguise. Had your girlfriend acting like she's practically mine. True say I'm strapped up like I'm packing the nine. But she, the whole scene, we call the rapper's delight. I'm like, yes, 23 inch rims, that's how I flex. Only TT things, that's how I sex. I don't need no bringing, I'm a vet. Give a CC ring, she give me neck. But allow it with that Birkin shit, weren't for me. You won't even know what Birkin is. Shorty drop that shape, that work that shit. We can roll something up and go burn that bitch. Your man wonders where... I'm not gonna say that part. I can't even say it, bro. <laughs> Honestly. I got... I got a phone call. Cause my, my PR, she knows what I'm like. And I got a phone call before I pulled up here and she said, Shut your mouth. Don't be swearing. <laughs> and I've ruined it all already. So that's that's all I'm saying. But yeah, respect. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Let's go to the member at the front here. Um, so you spoke about that moment when you're an up-and-coming artist and you get your first big paycheck. For you, what did you spend it on? I knew you was going to say that. <laughs> um, I spent my first paycheck in the Armani and Hugo Boss shop. <laughs> um, I'll be absolutely real with you. I'll be so real. The first, I never even seen a grand before, yeah. I was just like, kind of like living birthday to birthday, you know, when you get your little money and your cards for your birthday. And then the first, I woke up one morning and the first bit of money I got in that bank account when I first started making money, it was so satisfying. It said 30,000 pound, but like on the dot, it was like three oh comma oh oh oh. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And yeah, I probably had every new Hugo Boss tracksuit you've ever seen in your life. Armana. Um, and then I just didn't keep track of nothing. And then one day I looked and I had about seven grand. And I was like, whoa, this can't happen. So it was a bit of a lesson. But um, I don't know, I was young, I didn't really, I wouldn't advise no one to do this no matter what age, but I didn't really have any, um, I didn't really have anything else to spend it on, to be honest, and yes, I should have saved it. But I was kind of like so confident in myself that I knew I was gonna, like this was it for me, like this was just a start. And I'll be real, I did need some new clothes. So that's what I spent it on. I know that's not very inspirational, but I'm letting you know that that was a mistake, so don't do that, yeah. Um, let's go to the member on the end of the front bench. Um, so obviously you're from Manchester, um, and you refer to that quite a bit like in your music, and you've collaborated with Bugs and Malone. So I was just wondering, I guess, how would you say that like, being from Manchester has influenced your music, and like, what aspects in particular, if at all, would you say have like, played a massive role? Um, so yeah. I think, um, I think there's a little, there's a, up north of, it's like a little bit of different personality traits and that. No one go mad at me because I'm not saying this. I'm saying what I always say, but people, when I meet people from London and stuff, people always say, oh, people from up north are so nice. You lot are nicer than us lot. I didn't say that. Don't bite my head off. But yeah, so I don't know. I feel like it's just a, a certain vibe. Obviously at first, when I first came about, I was just that the white guy with a funny accent, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I don't know, it's just a certain, I feel like wherever you're from, you're always gonna have in, influence, like from your area and whatnot. Um, and yeah, I don't know, to be honest, there wasn't, like musically, there wasn't that much influence apart from like the Oasis and Storm Roses and stuff like that, which obviously I don't sing. If I sang right now, you'd all walk out. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know, I think there's just a certain vibe that Manchester's got. Manchester's always been a little bit legendary when it comes to music um, and football. Um, so yeah, honestly, I couldn't even put my finger on it. I couldn't tell you an exact answer, but I don't know, there's just a certain aura and swag about it that other places are a little bit different, I think. 
Hi, uh, uh, thank you for coming tonight. Um, I was just wondering about the drink. What inspired you to create your own drink and what could we expect for when we first drink it? Good question. I, um, I tried Prime. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> KSI is gonna right up my face off. Obviously, you should, you should, drink, you should drink water, obviously. And I've always, <laughs> that sounded mad, but I'm like, I'm, I'm mad. I'm addicted to like fizzy drinks. Like my fridge is filled with pep, well it was filled with Pepsi Max. And like, I, don't, I can't explain it. And I've always knew to myself, like you need to drink more water, but I just I couldn't do it. I needed some flavor or some fizz. <laughs> so we made a fizzy flavored water. Uh, but it's not like sparkling water, though. I don't like sparkling water. There is a difference, I promise you. Um, and yeah, and we just, we also done it because, like I said, people, I'm sure there's more people like me in the world, they want some flavor or they want a fizzy drink, but there's no sugar in it, there's no calories. Um, so yeah, you don't feel like your teeth are gonna fall out if you have one in the morning. You can drink this in the morning. Um, and for all the alcoholics out there, it's an amazing mixer. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know about anyone else, but when I was like, when I was in school and stuff, like we was, we couldn't, we didn't sell fizzy drinks in school or anything like that. Um, so this is a per because of the sugar thing and whatever. So this is a perfect thing. I feel like it just basically encourages people to drink more water, but it makes it a little bit more enjoyable. To be honest, that's not even like me trying to sell it. Yo, that's genuine. That's why we've done it. Um, so yeah, that's what it is. Hi, thanks for coming. Um, great to see people from Manchester. Um, can I ask, obviously you don't have to answer if you don't want to, um, but what was the situation with you and Amelia Dims? Like, what actually Ooh. happened? <laughs> yeah. Sorry if that's Shit. too personal. You don't, have, you, you don't have to answer if you can't. Obviously I get PR No, it's cool. Um. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> nah, um, nah, that, do you know what, that's my good friend. I seen her last night at some Halloween party, she's cool, she dressed up as Mr. Bean, she looked lit. Um, but no. Ah, mate. <laughs> my body language says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> but big up Amelia, I love her. And uh, I actually tagged her in a story the other day, she sent me a jumper, she's got some new merch out right now. So I asked her for one and she sent it me and it's this jumper and it says stop flirting with me on it. <laughs> so I got that and then I tagged her in it and then I messaged us. I messaged her saying miss you babe and she didn't she didn't answer it. <laughs> so yeah. That's about it. <laughs> for um, a lot of people, you know, want to enter the music industry, a lot of people, you know, you've made your first song, you've got your concept and everything down. So what what is it, what, what advice do you have to people who are rookies, who are trying to break out, who are trying to get their, who are trying to get their songs out there? And you touched on labels as well. Um, obviously that's been in, in the news a lot, not just yourself, Britney Spears, Taylor Swift, especially with her re-records. Um, what, what advice as well would you have for new artists with labels? With labels, okay, so, my advice would be to new artists who are trying to sign to a label or have signed to a label or are about to sign to a label, no matter how much money it costs and, and you know, it makes you feel sick sometimes when you spend certain amounts of money, get, first and foremost, get a good lawyer who can read through your contracts and has got your best interest at heart. Because if not, that's when you end up in 20 years time posting on Instagram, tagging your label in it, saying, release my music, and you know, you've seen it all before. So yeah, uh, but I would say like, you know, personally, every, I sit, every situation is different for everyone, but personally, I came in, I wanted to have a short-term deal as possible. Um, you know, so I tried to sign for just a one, one mixtape, no options. Um, so I could kind of like re-decide what I wanted to do after that tape. Um, it's not always about getting the most money out of them. 
you know what I mean? I feel like if you connect with people and you feel like they're the best people for the job, but they're offering half the money these other people are, but it's all about connecting with people and just and seeing what the seeing what the vibe is. But I don't know, my main my main advice would be to get yourself a lawyer who can genuinely read through the contracts and have your best interest at heart. Um personally, I would say like I said, try sign as like a, a short-term deal. Try not to be stuck in there for six years. You never know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, and honestly, that's about it. Really, I genuinely believe like it's just them two things. That's all you need to, you know what I mean? Because if we, if you went and got signed tomorrow for one mixtape, you know, as soon as you release that mixtape, you're free again. And if you like that label and they like you, they're gonna they're gonna want to sign you again for the other one. Whereas you don't want to be in a situation where you release the mixtape, you hate everyone in the label, they hate you, but you've still got another three to go. And then you don't enjoy music anymore, you know what I mean? You've always got to put yourself in a position where you're enjoying what you're doing and you enjoy the music you're creating. And don't let people change you. Don't let people just see you as a big money sign and make you do something that you don't want to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, that's about it. And then even advice to people who aren't even trying to get in a label deal. I just think you just got to be yourself. Stay true to yourself. Don't really, don't try to do something that's not you. Because if you, you go, if I went and made a song tomorrow that is not me and it ends up being my biggest song ever, what do, do I have to continue being this character that isn't me or am I going to end up getting caught out for wanting to be myself again? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. And work hard, man. It's not like... It's not no overnight paycheck thing, you know what I mean? There's gonna be some, there's gonna be some cold nights, you know what I mean? But it is, it's definitely worth it as long as you put the work in. And you're your own boss at this point, you know, you know you ain't got a certain time, you know you ain't got to be at work at nine, finish at five, go home, play a bit of FIFA and that, you know what I mean? Like, you, got, you have to take yourself to work and put yourself in certain positions. And if, if possible, get yourself a good manager. Don't have, don't even need to be anyone with experience necessarily. It just needs to be someone that has your best interest at heart. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's about it. Just be yourself. I was wondering, considering that you were so, or still are so transparent about your sister's condition and you sang about it, rapped about it, that's sort of a form of vulnerability we don't see a lot in the rap industry. And maybe not vulnerability, but humanity. And do you think that's been like welcomed with open arms in the rap industry in your scene, or has that also had more negativity? No, nah, I think more. I think definitely more so now these days. Like it's definitely being seen with open arms. I think that's why it took so long to do it as well. I was always like, yeah, I don't know. It it did take me a while to do it, but I feel like that's what people want to hear, especially y your hardcore fans. You know, what I mean, it's all right just popping out, making a big song for the clubs, and everyone loves it, but for the hardcore fans. That's what I just tried to do with the whole album, not even just that song, but just like, trying to be a bit more vulnerable and trying to explain my story and get people to understand me a bit more. Um, but yeah, I feel like, especially now, like, I don't know, in some cases, that's kind of the key. You gotta be vulnerable, you gotta be vulnerable. You don't just wanna be the, that guy that like, don't really know how to explain it. Like, you want people to know your personality and like, you want your fans to get to know you. I, 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 I kind of feel like, even when I meet my fans, I kind of get the vibe of like, they know my personality before I even meet them. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's the key. But yeah, vulnerability is always, is always the way forward, I think. I feel like people, you're never the only person in your situation. You know what I mean? There's always gonna be a, at least a couple of people who are going through the same situation as you who can understand. And sometimes people want, someone with a platform or an artist or one of their role models to speak up about something and that makes them feel more comfortable. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, vulnerable all the way, yeah. Uh, hi, uh, I really like your music, but um, I was wondering like what you thought of this like traditional like conservative argument against rap saying like um, it promotes like bad values, it promotes misogyny, it promotes all this kind of stuff. Do you think it has a point, or do you think it does good, or what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, one million percent, there's always, there's always a point to that. That's definitely not. Um, 
I definitely don't disagree with that in 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 a lot of circumstances. Um, obviously, music varies a lot in it, so it also depends on what artist you talk about or what song you're talking about when we have this conversation. Um, you know, it's a tough one. It's, it's a tough one to be honest. There's there's so many things you can say to to kind of like compare to it. You know what I mean? Obviously, there's the whole argument about. This is just for example, there's this whole argument about like drill music and then crime rates and stuff like that, which is so understandable, which I do half agree with, you know what I mean? I also don't think though that certain artists should be banned from creating music. Because like we've all we've all been we've been watching horror films since forever. You know what I mean? It's not like I don't know, it's not like I'm pretty sure there's been a, a serial killer out there that's been influenced by a horror film, you know what I mean? And we're not, no one's banning horror films or something like that. That's just, to be fair, that's just an off the top of the head example. But like, yeah, there's always, there's always negatives and positives to it. I think, you know, like I said, it depends what song you're talking about or what artist you're talking about. Um, but yeah, I do feel like in America, it is a lot worse than it is over here as well. I feel like for some reason, certain things are seen as acceptable in, in America more than they are here. I don't know, it's a bit of a weird one. But um, yeah, but, but back to my advice to upcoming rappers, watch your mouth, keep your mouth shut. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say it. Hi, thanks so much for coming. Um, I think a lot of people would look at you and think that you have everything that people traditionally aspire to. You have fame, you're at the top of your game, you're recognized. So beyond just what your future steps are for your music, what are your future steps just for your perspective on life now that you're at this level? It's a deep one. Um, I don't know, to be honest. I think there's always more goals to achieve. There's always more that I want to do. I'm definitely not just sat here satisfied and if it all went away tomorrow, I'd definitely be upset and I'm not trying to, still not trying to have no days off. I still feel like I've got things to do. Um, yeah, it's a funny one. It's a funny one to be fair because sometimes you have them certain days where you're like, oh, I just want to, I just want to go sit in KFC on my own and just chill out. And obviously so it's, a lot of the time I can't do that. But then I also want to continue my career, but then does that mean the more I'll, release music and the bigger I get, the worse that side of things is going to get. Do you get what I mean? It's always, sometimes it's hard when I want to take my family out to places and it kind of gets interrupted a lot. But I wouldn't change anything for the world, you know what I mean? I know what I signed up for. Um, I'm definitely happy with everything. Um, I would never dismiss one of my fans or kind of like not give them the time of day. Um, and yeah, I just feel like I'm just gonna keep going doing what I'm doing. I'm still young, I'm, I'm 23, you know what I mean? I was, I'm sat here going on like I've sussed life out. I ain't even sussed life out like that yet, you know what I mean? Like I'm still learning as well. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've just gotta keep going, keep working hard, stay focused and just keep trying more things. I'll always make music, I'll make music forever. Make drinks and stuff, I don't know, like just just keep pushing and just keep trying to branch out and and this sounds so cringy, but I actually mean this, like just make the world a better place in a sense, you know what I mean? Just keep bringing the vibes and just try and, try and better things where I can. So yeah, I think that's the plan. It's a bit of a basic question, but if you weren't a rapper, what would be your dream career? My dream career? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's a tough question, you know, I don't, re I don't really know to be honest. Maybe an actor, but that's a really boring answer that, isn't it? Uh, probably an actor. Uh, I'm not gonna, I, still to this day, I'd love to be able to sing. I'd love to stand here right now and sing my heart out to you lot, but I just really can't. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a couple to be fair. I don't know, I don't know about dream career, but like when I was younger, I always, I always thought I was gonna do something to do with sport, like a physio or a sports scientist or something like that. Um, but yeah, I can't lie, this, this is the only thing I wanted to do, to be fair. Um, 
I remember years and years ago, you ever seen the film Honey with Jessica Alba in it, like the breakdancing film? No one's seen that film. Don't tell me not one person in this room has not seen that film. I know you've seen Honey. <laughs> it doesn't even matter then, but that made me want to be a breakdancer. That's what I wanted to do when I was a kid. I can't dance now, by the way, but yeah, I don't know. But right now, I, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this career. But if it wasn't this, I'd, I'd probably do the acting thing, I think, yeah. I know you were at my Maya Jammer's party yesterday, so oh, I appreciate, yeah. appreciate you coming through. <laughs> but uh, I was going to say, obviously, earlier on in your career with all the freestyles and stuff, I was just going to ask what kind of impact Jamal Edwards had like, in your journey in getting to where you are today. You said what kind of impact like the freestyles had and stuff like that? With, with Jamal Edwards as well, with like SVT and everything. Um, you know what's mad, yeah? I, I actually never even... Correct me if I'm wrong. I actually never even went on SBTV, not like out of choice, just because it just never worked out like that. But, bro, my man has su supported me from day one, from the minute that first freestyle came out. He was always messaging me. He was always supporting my thing. Even when I was putting things on other channels and stuff like that, he would always like repost it and share it and tell people about me. Um, so yeah, he was a good guy, man. He was a good guy in everyone's eyes. I don't think anyone has, ever had a bad word to say about him, you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, like, I don't know, he's just a pioneer in this. Like, I remember even before I even wrote my first ever lyric, I remember knowing who Jamal Edwards was and seeing his channel and whatnot. So he was a big influence anyway before even meeting him, you know what I mean? Just, I don't know, he kind of like glued the scene together. Like, if you didn't, like Jamal was always that like mutual friend, you know what I mean? Like you don't, you might not know this guy, but oh yeah, you know Jamal, yeah, yeah, come through or whatever. So yeah, he's a good guy, man. It's a shame what happened, um, but yeah, he's definitely a big influence and definitely, it's crazy. Like I said, I ain't even been on his channel once, but he definitely still impacted my career, um, even me, even through meeting people back when I was a bit younger and people saying, oh yeah, Jamal Edwards told me about you. I'm like, oh yeah, he's the guy. But yeah, man, rest in peace, Jamal, that's the guy, 100%. Uh, thank you for being here today. Um, I was just going to ask, uh, like, you was m putting out music before this moment, but, like, a lot of people started to recognise you a bit more, like, in my opinion, from, like, your verse on Keisha Becky. So I was, like, just wondering, like, how important do you think that verse was in, like, your recognition and, like, coming up in the UK game? I can't lie, I spun that verse. I went crazy on that verse. <laughs> Nah, it was a hard verse, it was. Uh, that was important, 100%. Obviously, that was like the biggest song in the UK at the time. Um, so yeah, like, yeah, that was definitely a big part of my career. I feel like that was my little, I feel like I broke through and people was recognizing me and whatnot. And then I done that verse and that was like, that like solidified it. That was like, oh yeah, H is here to stay for a bit. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I don't know. It was a, uh, it was definitely a uh, one of the main, one of the main parts of my career. You know what I'm saying? Um, and even to this day, I'll perform that song, and the crowd goes absolutely crazy. Um, so yeah, that's it's a, it's definitely a big tune. It was the biggest tune that year. Um, and like, it's a weird one. It's always the ones that you don't really feel like would do that. You know what I mean? Like when I was, I remember doing that verse and in my head, I was just like, I'm just trying to put my face everywhere. And I'm trying to be in London and be seen with these guys or whatever. I just went in the studio, done my verse, left and didn't even think nothing of it. Turned up at the video, done the video, left. And then next minute, that's all I seen on Instagram for the next six months after that or something. So yeah, that was definitely a big part of my career, 100%. Uh, I feel like there's a few things in being a big time rapper that you only realize when you actually get there, whether it's like FaceTiming Chris Martin or, you know, performing in front of thousands of people. So my question is, what sort of aspect of being a big time rapper kind of surprised you and maybe like one that you enjoy the most? Oh. Um, what surprised me? Hmm. It's all like one 
big ball of everything, you know what I mean? Like, I can't even explain it. Like, like I said, the Chris Martin FaceTime, that was a weird one. That was like, oh, yeah, what? Um, yeah, man, I don't know. There's a couple of things. Everything just changes, and it's it's weird. I know I'm not... I don't really remember much before this, bro. I'll be honest with you, like, I don't really remember. Remember, I just, I, like, came out of school. I came out of school when I was 16, went to college. Um, and I, and I kind of, I literally went to college because in my head I knew I was going to blow up. And I just wanted to basically shut my dad up because my dad was on to me saying I need to get a job or I need to go to college. So I, I literally kind of went to college to like stall time and try and focus on the rap thing. And I'll be real with you, like looking back at it now, I just feel like all my life it's been like this. Um, so yeah, I don't know, it's it's a difficult one to answer to be honest, um, but everything's just changed. I feel like even me as a person, like not in a bad way, I feel like, I, I feel like I've grown up a little bit quicker than the rest of my circle did, or whatever. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't change anything, though. No. And I can't lie, there's, there's surprises every day. You know what I mean? People trying to jump jump in the car window while I'm driving down the street, and that that's a weird one. Um, but yeah, man, there's a lot. I couldn't even I couldn't even tell you one thing. Thank you. Um, it's great having you here. So thank you so much for coming. Um, so far, we've been talking about your music and the whole music industry and whatnot. I want to talk about something quite dear to you and your, sort of your work with Down Syndrome and mm -hmm. you know, being an ambassador there. What do you think is like one thing that should like that need to happen more, like something to further the cause for it? I don't. To be honest, bro, I think it's just a case of just making people aware. Like, and when I say making people aware, I just feel like making people feel comfortable. When it come when it comes to in all aspects of it, like people with Down syndrome, make making them feel like they can go live a normal life, they can go get a job, you know what I mean? They they shouldn't be seeing this difference to no one else. But then also people who have family members with it or something, or like I said before, someone who has a kid, and they find out they've got Down syndrome. To some people, that's like the end of the world, and you just gotta kind of like make people know that it's actually really not, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, to be honest, bro, like I don't think nothing. I don't think nothing needs to change. I just think it just you just need to, we just need to keep pushing it. You know what I mean? And just make people feel comfortable with it. You know what I mean? Obviously, I understand like people don't. Some people people some people don't like different or like change or whatever. Like it's kind of understandable, but it's not that though. Everything's everything's fine. You know what I mean? It's cool. So. Yeah, I feel like I just gotta keep doing doing what I'm doing with it, you know what I mean? You mentioned your desire, like wanting to stay in Manchester and staying in Manchester. So I wanted to know, like, what was your experience staying in Manchester and like balancing not missing out uh, on opportunities in like London, for example? Oh, um, yeah, well, like you said, most things within the industry I'm in are obviously in London. I remember even before I blew up, when I used to, there used to be a thing called Radar Radio. Yeah, that's it's not it's not a thing anymore. But they used to do grime sets there at Radar Radio, and we used to get in my manager's car. That sounded like it was gonna blow up any minute. Drive to London, go house on the petrol money, get get to London at like ten o'clock at night, do the set for an hour. Didn't have no money for the hotel room, so I drove back home. Go home at like four in the morning, whatever. Um, I just had to adapt to it all, to be honest, bro, and just like keep keep going back and forth. I, I did try being in London for a bit. I rented a place for a little bit. I did like it, but I don't know, it's not the same. As in, I kind of see London as like, yeah, I'm gonna go London to work, and I'm going home to Manchester when I, when I want to chill out. Um, I, probably, I probably have missed opportunities, to be fair, the amount I'm in Manchester. Um, but I think, yeah, like I said before, I know I keep chatting about finding the balance, but yeah, you got to find the balance and just keep going up and down. I can't lie, if I told you what my bill was for the hotel that I've been staying in the past couple of weeks, you would absolutely vomit. So I think I do need a place in London soon because I'm spending too much money on hotels. Um, 
but yeah, like you say, you've got to be where the action's at. You've got to be where where the industry's at. So I'll always be in London. I'm in London for a good couple of weeks at a time. Um, I just can't let Manchester go, bro. I can't lie to you. I don't know what it is. I just feel, I just go back there and I just feel comfortable. I just feel at home. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. This, if you was from there, you'd get it. You know what I mean? I don't know. You just, it just gives you that vibe. And um, I'll be real with you as well. I'm, I'm a mad, mad mummy's boy. Like, I go to London for a bit and I'm just like, oh my days, where's my mum? And I go straight back to Manchester, so. I do need to grow up a little bit in that sense. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I will end up with a place in London, whether I stay there 24 seven or not is a different story, but just to make it easier for me, yeah, definitely. And one last question that we ask all of our guests that speak here, if you could leave our members with one thing to think about, maybe that's a piece of advice or just something that's been on your mind recently, what would it be? If I could leave you lot with something. Drink sips, no, I'm joking. <laughs> right, I don't even want to sound cliche, yeah, but I promise you, everyone from the bottom of my heart, I'm not even that guy that just like would copy and paste something I seen on, on Instagram Explore page a minute ago or something, but like, I just feel like the main thing in life is not to be the richest person in the world or uh, basically, I feel like people nowadays, I feel like a lot of us are concerned about things that don't actually really matter. And I'm saying that from a perspective of thinking about how much I wanted certain things and then getting them things in abundance, but then realizing, oh, that doesn't actually matter. That doesn't actually change anything. Um, so I just think you just need to find your, find your own happiness in, in whatever that may be. Do what makes you happy. Um, you know, and it's hard to it's hard to put it not so bluntly, but like you do, something you don't need you don't need to care about certain things as long as you're happy and you, you're making the people around you happy and proud. And this sounds so generic as well, but you know, it's nice to be nice, isn't it? You know, what I mean, it's it's so cliche, but I feel like you just you get halfway where you want to be in life if you work hard and you're just a nice person. And then the talent or whatever, the knowledge kind of like comes next. You know what I mean? If we're all, if I, if I was employing people for a job right now and this guy came in and I absolutely hated him and he was just like rude and arrogant and whatever, but he told me he had 17 A stars. But then the next guy came in and I felt like I could get along with him and he was the nicest person in the world, but he got a couple B's and C's. I don't know about you lot, but I'm hiring that guy. So yeah, I feel like just, you just gotta be nice to people. You gotta have your own vibe. You gotta stay happy and, and do your thing and the rest will come. And don't worry about, like I said before, like stupid people on the internet chatting about, you need a Lamborghini at 23 years old. Like you must've lost your mind. No one even needs a Lamborghini full stop. Um, so yeah, that's about it, to be honest. I feel like, yeah, you find your own happiness, keep pushing, stay working hard, and uh, and yeah, make, make the people around you, make your friends and family proud, and I can almost guarantee you that is all that matters in life, I promise you. That's why I'm on right now anyway, like, that's my vibe right now. So yeah, that's what I would like to share with these lot, yeah. And drink sips, obviously. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah.